Binnen de tijd. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? I hope you've had a very interesting, inspiring afternoon. And it would be very nice to get a notion of how you've experienced some of the sessions. So please add a word or two or three in the chat um, so we can read that and give it back to you uh, and to share your feelings with us and thoughts. It truly has been a great afternoon of new insights, inspiration. Wow. Now, we've always uh, almost come to the end of our first day, and I'd like to remind you to connect afterwards uh, with fellow professionals in our network carousel to share thoughts with each other after today. But first, I'd like to welcome Maurice Back and Walter. Walter Leon and Maurice Barais, welcome. Hi. Yeah. Here we are again. This went so fast. Incredibly fast. Yes. Uh, a whole day of content and uh, no time. No, exactly. Well, also because it was just an afternoon yeah. instead of a whole day. And I think that's good, actually, because online events are also, you know, it's, it, it, you need some, some different attention than when it's live. Sure, <laughs> definitely. Now, Walter, what was the most interesting insight for you or more insights uh, of this afternoon? Yeah, I hope everyone can forgive me, of course, but uh, I, my, one of my main topics always has been high performance computing. Right. So I'm very much interested by the talk that uh, Detlef Lozek gave directly after my talk, where he talked about uh, COVID and uh, aerosols. And I wasn't aware until now that, uh, in fact, the aerosols that, that comes from the, some research here, wells in the 30s, 36, if I remember correctly, and uh, there is a difference between imperial, imperial metrics, uh, six feet and the one and a half meter we are applying here. But he uh, used this topic uh, using the, the national supercomputer for doing an analysis and then differentiating between different uh, relative humidity of air and air temperature. And uh, there you see, see directly what's, what's going on. So that was... Uh, Really nice to see uh, a really, really topical research area, COVID research uh, being done on our national system. Great, great, thank you. And is there a future for the next supercomputer in the cloud? Ah, that's a tough question. Uh, but also, and it's already touched, of course, by the, the previous panel. Yes. Uh, but if you look at uh, what's available, then uh, IBM used to have an uh, IBM soft layer, which nowadays is called uh, IBM Cloud, where you can get uh, yeah, bare metal clusters, as we would call it, uh, the real supercomputing capacity with all characteristics of a supercomputer. And also Microsoft Azure is offering uh, Cray, which is one of the famous uh, supercomputing vendors. Uh, they have a Cray inside their cloud. So that's what they are offering. But then the question is uh, whether it's feasible for researchers to move their research there. Mm -hmm. And that's a more tough question because then you have to look at the, the, the price performance ratio uh, between uh, doing it yourself, uh, setting up your own cluster like we do with Snellius, or whether you want to have a, a flexible solution like a cloud solution. But if you, as long as you, and of course we do those comparisons uh, regularly, uh, probably not uh, often enough, but uh, every couple of years we do, the, do this analysis, then if you have uh, your own infrastructure and uh, keep it busy for 80%, which is a typical usage of such systems, then they are more, more cost effective than uh, doing it in a cloud solution. Also, what we can do, which was also obvious from the previous panel, we have also our own specialists who know the infrastructure really well. Exactly. So they are able to support it um, in, in a very good manner. And the real problem going to a cloud solution, the, the technical problem is moving the data around. Right. And that also has been mentioned in the previous exactly. panel. How much does it cost? <laughs> Not if you have to transfer something that fits on a USB stick, but if you have to transfer petabytes of data, then uh, the, the transfer, data transfer costs exceed even the computational costs. So the answer is there is, there might be a future. There might be a future. <laughs> and uh, I always say I don't look further than five years ahead. No. Uh, so it might be uh, feasible in the future, but also depends on what's going on on the network. Uh, yeah. 
activity. I understand. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. Now, Maurice. Yeah. What sticks to your mind and heart today? Uh, for today, uh, the, the discussion uh, on clouds stuck in my mind. And what you see there is uh, you talk about cloud and computing and, and the usage of uh, HPC calculation in the cloud. But at the moment that you finish that discussion, you roll into data. You roll into, and Walter also said it, you roll into the fact that do you want to share data, put data uh, in, in the hands of someone you don't trust or you haven't got the right uh, uh, agreements with. So that's a problem, yeah. and that brings us actually to what we're going to do in the coming days, because these are the exact topics of uh, tomorrow and uh, Thursday. Um, I'm very much looking forward for tomorrow. The, the research champions will be uh, announced. I know who it is. I'm not going to uh, spoil this. So please uh, come and watch. Uh, these were people that were nominated by researchers uh, who were doing a great job. All of them, a long list of people were nominated. We were very pleasantly surprised uh, by that. And it's the first time. And it's the first time. So please come and watch that. Actually, tomorrow is a whole day of research support. All kinds of topics. Doesn't mean it's not interesting for researchers themselves. So I would implore them, please come and join us tomorrow also, because we need your voice in that discussion. Thank you. And then on Thursday, we go into open science and data management, the exact topics that uh, Walter uh, and the previous discussion uh, touched upon, uh, on how do we do proper open science and how do we deal with these data transfers and with moving data across borders while retaining sovereignty. So I'm very much looking forward to the coming two days. Thank you. Thank you. So there's enough for all of you for the coming two afternoons. Thank you, Maurice. Enjoy the coming days. Walter, thank you, and enjoy the coming days as well. And uh, whilst Sibren, my musician with whom I uh, opened the event, um, I'd like to enjoy, enjoy all the coming days, the coming two afternoons. Um, he's he's um, starting already, playing this beautiful instrument. And I'd like to thank all of you at home for your participation, your energy, your attention, your questions. And even though we try to make this event online as best as possible, we look forward to meeting you live soon. Many thanks also to the technical team. There's a whole team here with face masks. Woo! <laughs> uh, we'd like to thank Nemo, of course, the Nemo expert, all guests and speakers who shared their insights today, and everybody who made this afternoon possible. And for your information, all the afternoons have been recorded so you can watch it back from the 22nd of April. Have a lovely evening and see you tomorrow. And I'd like to end the day with the following quote by theoretical physicist Edward Teller. The science of today is the technology of tomorrow. <laughs>